Hello, I'm Ken Mahaffey. I'm the Vice Chair of Clinical Research in the Department of Medicine. Welcome to Clinical Research Update. This is going to be a series of video interviews that will be posted on the Department of Medicine website once every two to three weeks, where I'm going to be talking with prominent uh, researchers in the department and in the school with important initiatives, individual projects, or maybe even late-breaking results from research that has just been completed. It's really my pleasure to be able to have Harry Greenberg join me today as my first uh, guest interviewee. Harry, welcome. Happy to be here, Ken. Thanks. Harry Greenberg, as many of you will know, is a professor of medicine in uh, the Department of Medicine and in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology. He also has appointments in microbiology and immunology. He's also the Senior Associate Dean for Research in the School of Medicine and the Director of Spectrum at Stanford CTSA. So, Harry. All of that in uh, buck 50 and I get on the New York subway. There you go. <laughs> or the Caltrain. Yes. So many people know the CTSA was re, uh, renewed last year with a perfect score. You must be incredibly proud of the team that put in that application. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm proud of the team. Um, you know, Ken, uh, grants, uh, I've been getting grants, applying for grants for a long time, and there's a certain stochastic quality to it. So. Uh, at some level, I think, uh, there's enough monkeys and enough typewriters, the work of Shakespeare will be produced, and that may have had something to do with our perfect score. But we've, we have a, a lot of people who work very hard on it, um, and uh, it certainly didn't hurt uh, Stanford. Um, and actually, when I got the score, I was positive that it, there was a typo, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> well, good news, great news, in fact. Tell me a little bit about what is in the, the grant application for the next five years that really sets us apart as a premier institution to be part of the CTSA program? Well, I, as you know, it's interesting. Um, this type of grant um, is, is highly choreographed. The RFA went on for, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 pages with a lot of specificity as to what they wanted you to talk about. And perhaps one of the reasons we did okay is that we followed the instructions and actually organized the grant as they, um, they wanted it to be organized and worked hard because reviewing this type of grant where it's, it's a highly choreographed response and at some level, since as you also know, the CTSAs are um, uh, infrastructure grants. They're not grants where, um, that lend themselves to a huge amount of innovation, um, can be boring to the reviewer. And I think we tried hard to make it easier to review, to be clear, and to spice it up as much as possible. Um, I think, why did we do so well, other than what I just said to you? Um, in the realm of innovation, where there's more focus in the CTSAs now than there was when they started, um, we have a leg up. Stanford, uh, if you read the New York Times, if you go out on the street, um, Stanford is, the, the, is ground zero for innovation at the moment. And I think we benefited from that. In fact, we have in the CTSA a section called the Innovation Accelerator section that really trades on several on two projects that have been ongoing at Stanford for some time that we've helped but um, uh, really are exemplary of our great faculty. One is biodesign. I think all the people looking at this will know what biodesign is. And the other is Spark, which is a, a, pro a program developed by Daria Mochley Rosen and Kevin Grimes. Spark, Spark and Biodesign are programs directed at one, devices, and two, therapeutics, and how to innovate in those spaces. One, how to train people to innovate, and two, um, that training is how do you move your good idea into the place where it could help humanity. The, the last innovation um, uh, we just started, uh, um, Accelerator, and that's something called SPADA, and that's being directed by a tool Butte. And that's the, really the third leg of 
clinical innovation, and that's um, what we've called prognostics or diagnostics. Any innovation that helps you predict um, uh, something useful in clinical medicine, from an app to an imaging study, all of those. And in all of those studies, um, I think our grant looked good because we had actually a lot of good preliminary data. Well, that's terrific. So you're providing not only the framework for people to do some creative research, but the training to give them the expertise um, and the knowledge that they need. Yes, and uh, just uh, a little um, uh, advertisement. Uh, one of the nice things about a CTSA grant is it's actually, uh, there's a big component of it that is a training grant. The CTSA, I think in steady state, we will have 20 trainees at any one time. And for those people looking at this, we just went through this year's round of training uh, of applications. But for all the faculty who are looking at this video, or for young uh, postdocs of any sort, um, please take a look at the solicitations because this is a great award that, is, especially if you're interested in getting a master's in various areas of clinical research, it's helpful. I think that's important to highlight, Harry. You know, in the Department of Medicine, we're hiring new faculty almost every day and the presence and the focus on clinical research is increasing. And so having the ability to tap into those kind of funds I think is critical for our young faculty as well as our house staff and fellows. Well, yes, I think this is more generally in the, in the fellow house staff, although faculty could uh, tap into this, but they would need to take off a fair amount of, of time. But this is, um, I think the time has passed when you do a chart review as a fellow and then look for a job on a faculty doing clinical research. Uh, I, I agree completely. <laughs> but you're helping a lot of people do a lot of good research, but you're still very active investigator yourself. What, what's going on uh, in your lab? So um, it is, for people who are looking at this tape, um, it is possible, although difficult, to be an administrator and not lose all your marbles. And um, I've tried to keep my laboratory program going, and I've been lucky in that sense. I'm a virologist. I've studied a lot of viruses over my uh, career. Most of my work now focuses on two viruses, rotavirus, which is actually a pediatric pathogen, major cause of diarrheal disease. Um, I, and the other virus I study is influenza, which of course all of our viewers uh, know about. In both cases, I would say my work has tended to be on pathogenesis, how the virus actually does its dirty deed and how the host responds to it. And I, I would say over the years, it's been a pretty broad mix of sort of basic biochemistry, cell biology, and virology mixed in with a bunch of immunology, some applied, some more basic. And over the years, I've had a lot of clinical work. I've been involved, luckily, in making uh, several vaccines, a vaccine for rotavirus and a vaccine for influenza. Well, it's great to hear that many of us who are now in administrative roles can continue to be successful. And not lose uh, your marbles. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, or yeah. anything else for that matter. <laughs> yes. Well, Harry, thank you so much uh, for coming in today and sharing some of your thoughts on the CTSA, what the opportunities are here on campus from that uh, terrific program, and also what you're doing as well. Thank you, Ken, and uh, nice idea, by the way. I, <laughs> I look forward to seeing some more of these. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining Clinical, Clinical Research Update. Look forward to coming back to you in the near future with other exciting programs. Thanks for tuning in. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.